Okay, I'd like to call this the meeting of the November 17th Budget and Finance Committee meeting to order. Uh, as is customary, uh, we do the Pledge of Allegiance. We could all stand and do that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I guess the roll call here is a vestige from something else. Uh, so we, I don't think we re really need a roll call today. Well, we certainly don't uh, need a roll call for all, for all these people, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think this was uh, pulled over from some other meeting, the whole board. But we should know. Uh, okay, you want to go ahead and. No, no, no. I just want to note that okay. Donna's not here, but yeah. on our way. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Uh, and we do have uh, Clerk Flintoff is of the committee, as is Supervisor Hathaway and Chair Murray. Uh, first item is to the adoption of the agenda. There's uh, two corrections. It's it's in the agenda itself. I added it uh, just this morning. It was an omission. To, this would be the budget finance committee meeting scheduled for 2023. So it's just uh, something to add to that. Uh, because the board did not approve uh, Manor Kasterison or a, uh, a process to use them, I would like to remove that from this budget, or I'm sorry, this agenda. So with those changes, do I have a motion to approve? Where are you adding the schedule oh, to new business? Or? The schedule is would be F4. Okay. Well, yes. But we're removing F1. We're removing F1, F1 and adding, and adding, F4. adding F4, which is 2023 Budget and Finance Committee meeting schedule, which I, did I give you one of those? Oh, sorry. I don't okay. think I gave you one. Thanks, Jim. And Jim, could we also just get a, a quick update, not on the whole audit process, but on the outstanding items list? Yes, we're. I've communicated with uh, with Sandy and Rebecca this, I think, last night or this morning, and they are working together to coordinate getting that. Okay. Hopefully today. Do you two have everything you mm -hmm. need? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Great. Is that going to be agenda item to give a status of the budget? No. Of the audit. No, that's not the purpose of this meeting. Um, no, Jim, that's all I wanted was just have, okay, a, have right. a, uh, just an update on our outstanding items because we still right. have the, the seven. Yeah. Correct, so. yep, no, I followed on that right away. So okay. uh, I've asked uh, Rebecca and Sandy to coordinate to make sure the rest of those questions were all answered, okay. including the new, this, this last one that was on its own. And I've already provided some of it this morning. I'm guessing probably, would you say probably at the end of the day, we'll yeah. probably have everything to them. Okay, so, great. Thank yeah. you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next uh, agenda item is the approval of the minutes. This was back from August 18th. Um, has everybody had a, ch you had a chance to look at those to see if there were any potential corrections? They were pretty basic. Uh, it's a long time ago, but yes, it looks it looks right <laughs> so to me. I'll I'll Can move I, to approve okay. the, the the minutes as uh, drafted. Okay. Support. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, the next on the agenda is uh, an opportunity for the public to speak uh, uh, for up to three minutes, hopefully somewhat on topic if they would if they wouldn't mind. Uh, so anybody in the room, I'm sure I'm sure Kathleen would like to speak. I see the, the makeshift. Lectern up there. Do we, do we have one? 
That's that's what I was saying. It's in one of these closets. I have to find it. You should pull it out. Yeah, I know. People, that's what people I, seem to like it. I, that's exactly what I said this morning. Well, um, and let's and not make fun of my makeshift podium. It works. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not. I, yeah. It's a great, it's a I'll great MacGyver. Fine. Yeah, <laughs> and I would say for for anybody wishing to speak before the committee, you're welcome to speak about anything under the purview of this committee. I already knew that, but thanks. Right. I'm encouraged to speak on topic. Go ahead, Kathleen. Hi, I'm Kathleen Brandt, Sio resident. I live at two five three four Roseland Drive. I object to any effort to modify the existing cost allocation model as, as designed by Woodhill Group. The township has already paid for this work by highly qualified and certified professionals. I object to paying any firm to duplicate efforts already completed by David Rowley, PM Gap, or the Woodhill Group. I object to interim administer Murdy being involved in the selection process for a finance director. He has no qualifications for this task. I object to Deputy Treasurer Egler being involved in any finance tasks under the purview of the clerk. She vacated the finance director position. I also object to her being involved in the cost allocation process. This is a violation of internal controls and she is not qualified for this task. Um, and finally, per Mr. Hathaway's rules of order, neither he nor anyone else should be allowed to speak regarding my comments. If this happens, I demand the right to rebuild, but any such statements. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jonathan Greenberg. Okay. Go ahead. Hey, hi. This is Jonathan Greenberg, 6250 Park Road. I was just doing some math this morning, and then I went to the Whole Foods website, and for the cost of our private lawyer who only reports and supports the supervisor, Mr. Homier, He's cost the township the equivalent of 3,420 Thanksgiving meals with all the fixings. That's turkey and ham and 12 sides. 3,420 people could be eating Thanksgiving dinner from Whole Foods for the cost of Mr. Homier this year. 3,420 people could be eating a wonderful meal prepared and provided by Sio Township and Whole Foods, but instead we pay Mr. Homier to side with the supervisor against all laws and legal uh, advice we've received from other experts. Can we please take a look at the cost and do an examination whether this expense is appropriate? Thank you. Next up is Rob Pattinson. Go ahead, Rob. Thank you, Rob Pattinson, Sio Township. Three months ago, this committee had a report on how the township got to the point of putting the fire department $1.5 million in debt. At that meeting, there was absolutely no discussion about the resolution of that mistake. Uh, Mark Perry, yesterday morning at the Fire Services Guidance Committee, gave an opinion based on 40 years of experience as a taxpayer advocate, and I will read some of his comments. The township executed a construction agreement in its name to build or renovate Z for $1.5 I understand that it had to be done, but then the question is, how are you going to pay for it? And the pay for it is this, as you took 1.5 million out of the general fund reserve and paid the contract in the form of an intercompany loan to the capital fund, the fire department is a fixed millage rate funded department. The general fund is funded by the general law township one mill. So over the years through prudent business management, the township accumulated $8 million in reserve 
that it borrowed from to pay off the construction agreement they executed. And then it was decided we'll pay the 1.5 million back from a restricted fund to an unrestricted fund. It strikes me because I don't know the details as inappropriate. How can we take restricted funds and put it in an unrestricted general fund? If ever anyone would ask my opinion, the only way to get rid of the $1.5 million debt so that taxpayers don't have to increase the restricted fund millage rate to pay off that 1.5 million because the fire fund doesn't have the funds to do it. Again, taking money out of one pocket and putting it into the other. I would think that the $1.5 million debt should be extinguished because it's not, because if it is not, it becomes a tax increase. Again, a second time the voters pay off that loan, but in the form of a restricted fire millage rate. Later, he says, just going back to the crux of my thinking on that is the taxpayers paid it once going into the unrestricted general fund. And if we ask them to pay it a second time to replenish the general fund reserve, then that's a tax increase. And that's where I'm coming from. I would appreciate it if this committee, the members of this committee would work in some way, since you haven't been doing it for three months, in the next three months, to find a way to relieve this burden you have put onto the fire department and resolve this $1.5 million debt mistake. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Next up is David Reed. David Reed. <coughs> Style Township resident, voter, ex-board member, and current member of the fire committee. Um, Rob, you stole, you stole most of what I was gonna say, but you said it much more eloquently than I. All I can do is add to that, that the contract that was signed for the fire department was signed by the township supervisor. The building is a township asset. To put one money, as Rob said, in one pocket of the township and move it to the other pocket, um, is sounds ridiculous. It's all township money. Um, the lack of the hunt of the 1.5 million is hampering the operation of the fire department. It's preventing the, the fire chief from hiring the needed employees and making the needed investment in equipment. And um, there's no reason why this money should not be or this debt should not be extinguished. And Rob said he didn't know how it was going to be done. I know how it's going to be done. You go into the you go into the general ledger and you zero out that 1.5 million uh, amount that's being held, basically held in ransom from the fire department. Just zero it out. This is township money, and and I when as a prior a prior board member when I voted for this process when I voted to build the uh, or to pay for the building of the fire department or rebuilding of the fire uh, station, I had no idea and in fact would have voted no if I had known this was the result. Somehow, after we approved this, back behind the scenes, there were changes made that were not approved by the board. So I asked this budget committee and I asked the board to simply extinguish the loan, give the money back to the fire department. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. At this moment, I see no other hands raised. Okay, <clears throat> we will move on to new business. Uh, the, the first item to discuss is the budget process timeline, uh, which I distributed to everyone. I will go through very briefly. Um, we've already begun one-on-one -on -one meetings with, uh, with the budget partners or stakeholders in the budget. This is just nothing more than to to help explain how the process is gonna be and, and more or less just what the deadline is for doing that particular component, meaning requesting what your budget request is going to be for the 23-24 budget beginning April 1st. Uh, so far we've, we've had, I think two thirds of everybody we've already met with and we will complete uh, with the exception of uh, Planning and the planning and zoning with Doug Luan. Uh, I've not scheduled anything with him yet. Uh, I believe we have our IT, the virtual CIO. We have to meet with, and then Clark Flintoff to uh, to meet with. And those and that all those kickoff meetings will be complete. 
This is nothing more than, than trying to describe and encourage people to, to, to work collaboratively to help prepare the budget or at least the, the requested budget. This will be happening from now through January 11th, which is the deadline. Uh, the, the numbers then will be compiled, put together for a budget and finance committee meeting on January 26th. This will be the next, uh, the next step. Once the budget and finance, finance committee has, uh, has worked through it, and that'll, I'm guessing that'll be a fairly long meeting, uh, this committee will, committee will then present to the board, the full board, uh, final budget draft. And during the first half of February, we hope to schedule a special working session of the, <clears throat> excuse me, a special working session of the board of trustees to review, complete, refine, do whatever it needs to do to, uh, to complete the budget for 23-24. Uh, with that complete, hopefully on March 14th, the board will hold a public hearing on the budget. Their first, that's their first regular meeting of March. Uh, and then the second meeting of March to approve the final budget. Uh, I just put down here some other dates and milestones concerning how we'd like the, when the next audit would begin, closing the books, et cetera. Um, do I have any comments or? Any revisions, anything to, yes. Yeah, um, thanks for putting this together. Um, I'd like us to kind of flesh this out and then have it go to the board for approval um, prior to, I know it's kind of underway, which is great, thank you. Um, I, couple questions. One on the partner list that you sent out, I didn't see anybody assigned to planning and zoning, which is where we have a lot of that would be cost. done. done. We have oh, you do? Yes. Okay, I missed that. Great. I don't know if it was just not in the list. No, no, that. my apologies. I might have overlooked it. I want to make sure that we yes, look Doug, at that. Yes, Doug, was, that's who we, okay. we, we assigned. And obviously, he wasn't here during the two days that we were scheduled. Okay, perfect. Um, I'll, I'm happy to meet. I'll schedule with you. I'll be submitting on the elections, clerk, accounting activities. Okay. Um, are there revenue projections that have been provided to departments? No, no, but in fact, uh, one of the things that we discussed, especially with uh, with Andy and the fire department, is we're almost going to have to have uh, a budget with or without any revisions to say PA 33, any sort of new revenue that we might be able to get for the following fiscal year. I think we so, should plan on a budget without. Well, that's no, that's what I said. We're right. I asked Andy to prepare a budget. Worst case scenario, we can't get any more money to fund the, the fire department. Uh, and I know the, the next election is would be May at the, at the earliest. So we sort of have to plan for that particular contingency. Yeah, I would object to uh, putting it on the May ballot. We wouldn't want to do that because, well, wait for the yeah. fire services committee. Right. Well, but, they, but anyways. But, right. These are sort but, of different decisions. But what I want to say is revenue projections, just, just property mm -hmm. tax, just the regular right. stuff, the open space yeah. millage, parks millage. I sure. have department has been given kind of estimates of what they're working with for next year. Is that Andrea yep. or it was it was around five percent is what we sort of mentioned for, okay. for normal uh, normal budget. Okay, great. Uh, just for something to work with. Okay. But this is this I intend for this to be an interactive process. This these several weeks up until yeah. June, so that people that were it's not just go away, come back in the. Uh, the 11th of uh, January, mm -hmm. we all work together. They go back to Sandy and say, I've got questions. What is our revenue? Do you have any more up-to-date revenue projections while we're all working on this together? Definitely, uh, definitely. So, so yes, I want it to be more interactive from mm -hmm. here through January 11th. And I would ask that um, partners submit not just the draft um, budget in BSNA or on Excel, however you're gonna do it, but the um, a bit of the narrative. And I have there. asked that as well. Okay. And are you for, are, for, for new projects? Why don't we don't need a narrative for, for kind of ongoing things, but anything new that's going to add to the budget, especially we need we need somewhat of a narrative. 
Okay, I think some just, yeah, any justification. I mean, we have lots of different forms. Um, narrative, I just don't want it to get lost. Um, then capital, any capital. I know that year over year, sometimes um, department heads aren't quite sure how to describe the capital. So would that just be a uh, uh, narrative that you want for any would this, capital? Any, anything that's, uh, you mean a new acquisition? Yeah. Yes. Those that I have encouraged a narrative for any new per, large purchases. Okay, great. Uh, as as you know, I had always done in my department. Right. Anything brand, large or brand new that we are encouraging some kind of a narrative to explain why you need what you need, why you need right. it, why do we need it now? Right. Um, and then the um, authorized position chart. I would ask for any changes to that. So, for example, because we have two plates two places, there's salary lines, but there's also the authorized positions that we've used since like 2019, 2020, and it's adopted as part of the budget resolution. So I would just ask people to kind of go through, because there's been so many changes, like for example, in assessing, you know, they still have authorized a couple extra positions. I don't know if they need them all. You know, utilities may want to make some adjustments, but just looking at the, authorized range and titles for okay. those. Right. I think that would be really okay, great. Okay, that's a good idea. Yep, we will do that. Um, and then the, the budget that's submitted on January 11th, I would um, suggest that this be, and I can't remember, Sandy or Rebecca, what it's called in BSNA, but I think it's called, is it the proposed budget? That requested, first time, requested, requested budget. That's, that's really what's going to be completed by January 11th. Yeah. So the requested budget, I would ask that that is um, uh, submitted to the whole board. I What I don't want to have happen is the requested budget numbers to go to a small group and then the whole group not be able to see kind of the, you know, we want to see requested, recommended, adopted. And none of that, if every bit of that will be preserved. And presented. Oh, right. But, but it really doesn't need to be presented to the board ahead of the work session of the full board. Well, and As I say, we, I'm happy to present yeah. and provide to the board every step of the way, but, but we don't need to have approval of no, as requested. I didn't, I didn't say approval, okay. but I do think at that point, sharing oh, it sure. out. I'll, Sure, well, yeah. I think we can be requested. happy to just send out to the board and they can see what was requested. Yeah, and exactly. It's well, just that a, was the whole point. It's just a uh, report, right? Yeah. And then um, I would suggest on the, you know, the Budget and Finance Committee was is not charged to draft the budget. And that has been very clear when we did the Budget and Finance Committee first in 2019. And then when it was revised last year, it was... It's, it's nowhere in its charge to do budget making. And it was never supposed to be. It's about process, policies, and there was a strong intention to kind of keep it out of, you know, the, the process. So, it's, so it doesn't, um, so, so I would say, I think, and, and given how many new board members we have, I would suggest that we go, right to uh, a work session and not for any action, but a work session of the board by the end of January that maybe just, you know, goes through the requested and recommended so that everybody gets an understanding of like, okay, here's what the choices are gonna be. Here's the, the structure of it. Because in our past processes, that when the work session happens too late, um, and inevitably, Jim, I don't think the board's gonna be able to complete a final budget draft in a work session, but what I do think they'd be able to do is talk about it, understand, understand what departments are asking, what you're recommending, and we'll be probably 90% done by the end of that work session. And I think we could do that in January. I just don't see the, value of having this committee. Um, I, I would rather have this work session of the board at the end of January, review those two things, 
And then we could have a, a next version come forth out of that and have a public hearing on it and finalize. Jessica, I disagree. This process is just a step and it helps for us because we're here every day, we're working with the members, the board is not mm -hmm. other than us three. Mm -hmm. It helps to really dig into some de de the detail before it goes to the board. Oh, certainly. And you know, the department heads can come here and ask more questions, easier for them mm -hmm. than coming out at night or at another meeting. Mm -hmm. So I think that's still an important part of the whole process. I, would, I, would, I think one of the values of the Budget and Finance Committee is that, and I think, you know, Jessica, you pointed this out back in 2021, um, is that it offers uh, the opportunity for us to hear from the public as we go. Mm -hmm. So if we were to eliminate that step from the process, we would be eliminating an opportunity for the public to come in as we work on the budget. Yeah. So I wouldn't want to do that. I, I wouldn't want to sort of limit the public to that late no, stage no, no, no. public hearing. No, no, I was saying that what we do is January 24th or maybe that last weekend of January, whatever it is, January 24th is our regular board meeting. Be better to have it during a day. But my suggestion is that third week of January, the board have a work session sometime during the day, maybe even you know, a working day and department heads can come and talk about it. I mean, it's, we, because what, what we haven't had in the last couple of years, which is important is to hear what the departments are asking for, what's being proposed. And then with that level of discussion, I think we'll be pretty close. I just don't see, I can't imagine what, um, because we're all gonna have input into it because we are here every day. Um, and it's also not in our charge as the budget and finance committee um, to draft up the budget on the board's behalf. So that, that's my suggestion um, that we do something as a whole board at the end of January. So you'd like and to move up that working session that's currently that's what I'm saying. In, in early February, you'd like to make it late like January. January. Yeah, exactly. So it would replace that step of, yeah, move that up. And then what we'd have is some time then in February, and I don't know, but we could then have a next step if needed. If, if certain departments or issues need to come to a smaller group, you know, I, I'm not sure, Jim, but then we would have some spaciousness in February. And then is the four, is the 14th and the, the 28th, are those our regular meetings? Yes, those are okay. the regular meetings. Did you say spaciousness? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I the, said spaciousness. Uh, okay, well, well, um, I guess I I disagree with that first meeting that being a full board meeting. I think it's very inefficient. I think most of the trustees are not going to be as familiar with the prop or with, with mm -hmm. at least the numbers. And I would much rather have a budget finance committee mm -hmm. meeting with all the departments mm -hmm. of of that are able to attend, mm -hmm. they can come and discuss their own particular mm -hmm. area of the budgets, and then maybe come to some kind of a consensus that we can present then to the board. So the board is not overwhelmed, especially with the new members. As yeah. you or, or even I don't if, think if, if it's just not a, it's just not an efficient way to govern yeah. to have a, an entire board. Right. You want to have things very refined, at least what, what the department heads would like, what administratively we, we think we can work with based on the budgets and then have the hearings with the department heads as this group I, right here. I understand. I'm just, and, uh, I've, I've said what I, what okay. I said. I think, yeah. I think what I'm proposing is, is more efficient and is going to come out with a better budget. I don't, I, I also want to avoid some of the mistakes we've made in the past of, you know, again, if there's a, Look, I've, I've said what I said, okay. so that's, well, that's what I and think. I, and I think we can all agree here at the table, we all want the best possible budget and we want everybody to be heard. Not only the department heads, we want the, the entire board to be heard and they will. everybody will have an opportunity and we want the public to be heard right. uh, but in I, this entire process. Right. So but we all want the same. The Budget and Finance Committee has never been charged by the board 
to be empowered to change, modify, refine the budget. So, so be aware of that. Okay. okay. Um, I, what I would say is, um, I, I, what I hear you saying is moving that working session early, as early as possible with the board. And yeah, I, like third week of January. I, well, or the Ish. first week of February. Yeah. Know, a big difference. You know, I, I think, you know, if we can move that, you know, try and schedule that as, as early, early as possible in February. Yeah. I think that well, might And be it's helpful. not a final budget draft right. that they'd be looking at, right? I mean, it could be. It, what I think at that well, let's point, hope, I mean, we may have to have two meetings if it can't be done in one. I understand. Just because there's the so more many work, departments. The more, the more work we do as a budget finance committee uh, before that, the, yeah, the there, less work it's going to require for the. Yeah, program. there is staff work to be yeah. done. I don't see it as the work right. of this committee. The, okay. Well, I, it, it does say budget. It. it does say mm -hmm. budget. So I think at, at the very least, we are charged with looking at the budget, seeing if we can work with it and help mm -hmm. provide a package, a better package to the board, mm -hmm. uh, to the full board. I think that's really what we need to do is have a, a nice mm -hmm. concise package. It's all up to the board to decide ultimately what it is, but we want to have a, a fairly concise. And I think the at least our new trustees have sort of demanded they don't want to see wishy-washy stuff coming. You know, well, you know, let's this is this is what we've got, let's figure it out. They want to see some strong recommendations from the directors <laughs> and I think from this committee. And the, and the staff that, that's going to be working on it. Mm -hmm. and I think it's really up to us to give them a good, mm -hmm. a good preliminary or at least a proposed budget. I think I think it would be the requested budget, and I think we would re this would be a recommended budget to the to the but to, and it says to the initial board. draft. And then the board yeah. would then kind of hash through it. But I think we're all trying to get to the requested same requested and proposed proposed <laughs> requested and proposed. But I know that at least in BSNA the language says recommended. I believe that's but fine. I know, that's but, fine. But, I, but yes, I that's really what it is. So I think the better package we can get to the I, board, I, and, and, Jim, I, and, and I, I would like to have. Uh, well, well, let me just explain why we the, the 26th we selected that only because. Uh, Historically, and I'd like to say that I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but historically, people don't meet deadlines. So, so we were, we didn't it's want to push it. We, it's just a fact. We wanted to push it back a little bit to, uh, you know, if we don't have things by the 11th, we go to the departments and say, is there a problem? What can we do to help? Mm -hmm. So we're allowing at least a little bit of an extra gap mm -hmm. there. And that was the only reason that we sort of selected the, mm -hmm. the 26th. And when we want to go straight to the board work sessions. Well, it is. If yeah, the first I, half, Jim, it could be the very Jim, next I've week. already given you my input. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. The only thing I would add, Jim, um, is sort of a, a tweak to what you were saying earlier is it's possible that um, the Budget and Finance Committee will hear from um, department heads and we won't be able to sort of reach consensus. And I think then that helps the board mm -hmm. in their working session. We can bring to them and say, look, you know, here's these two sort of agree. two competing play, yeah. you know, sort of um, um, requests or proposals for this particular uh, department and or this particular item in this particular department budget. Um, this is something that uh, the board is going to have to sort out. And again, this is not the charge of the Budget and Finance Committee. And I don't think I think you're making a, an assumption that the board expects the Budget and Finance Committee to come up with a draft budget. I don't know that they do. Well, so again, it's not the charge. It is the charge to the supervisor to bring to the board a draft. That's budget. fine. It's and, not. And I think this is a, you know, what uh, Jim has proposed is this process, including the budget and finance committee meeting, is a good way of using existing structure to um, get input from everybody, including the public. Mm -hmm and bring it to the board in a form that um, will help the board to make a good decision. Right, so that's fine. Um, so so the, were you, you were making suggesting a change to the, to the actual calendar. Uh, I was just saying, you know, basically in, in include, making, making a note that we'll try to schedule that working session in February as early as, early as possible, possible. In, in February. Yes, first half, I say, I'll just put it as early as possible. Is that that we may we may want to have another two two sessions. It could be that we'll need two. Okay. 
So with 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 that uh, tweak to the, tweak to the language of the timeline, I would move the model motion, which is where where I went, um, for uh, um, approving the uh, FY twenty three twenty four budget timeline. Um, oh, I'll support. Okay. Just to say, did it update? Yeah. yeah. In favor. Um, so, so oh, this is to sorry, be. Some oh, yeah. Just, yeah. just a process question. So, this is a motion for the committee to approve this. Yes. And then go to the board for approval, or approve no, it, and then move yeah. it. That I, I this think, is the budget process. I think the board doesn't need to approve, but but I know Mark did specifically ask that I provide this to yeah. them. So, I which I will do. Right away, okay. just so that the board is aware of what this is. I don't believe okay. the board needs well, to approve it, but I don't want to keep them. Something. I don't want to keep them in the dark either. Right. Yeah. As to how it's going to how, how we how, at least how we envision this. To okay, work. I would um, you know I'll, I'm going to re respective respectfully um, vote nay on this um, just because I think that um, again the role of the budget and finance committee some certainty around it. I think it's going in the right direction, but it's not quite where it needs to be. So okay. I'll be voting. Jessica, committees are an advisory. Yeah, group. and I'm advising the board that this it and should be changed. all that in January 26, at least the item, the explanation, that's still just an advisory okay. committee. She's just disagreeing, that's okay. Fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so uh, do we... Um, I, I, I want to, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 And in opposed, nay. Nay. Okay, thank you. So the motion carries. Uh, the next item to discuss, uh, this is a discussion only, and it's, this is the cost of allocation plan for 2324. Oh, yeah. Great. Um, and I know I have, I've had comments from both, uh, from, I think from all areas on this topic. So it's, it's probably a good one to discuss here. At least okay. find out, uh, uh, I know there's been problems with it from, uh, from Rebecca, our finance manager. And uh, so maybe this is a good time to find out yeah. what the problems are and what you're proposing and how, to, mm -hmm. how can we make mm -hmm. this work better? Yeah. So Rebecca, let's start with the problems. Um, well, Woodhill did put the, the whole process together. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we did pay Woodhill to do that, but every year the process needs to be looked at. Yes. Costs that we build into the plan. And last year, you were the one that worked with Woodhill mm -hmm. on it, and I wasn't included in the process. So implementing it made it harder as far as, okay, what costs were included in this? In that, in that, so back in, and so let's, that was, we first did it in 2021, 22. And so I remember they set up that first journal entry, the 112. Yep. And yeah. they said, go ahead and do that every year. Yep. Yep. And then at the end, I but as far as them. what made up those costs, even that was unclear all year. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so then come March, we take the actual cost and compare it to what we we're billing. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. And there was some confusion on that. Um, and that's what caused my bank recons for that bank statement to go months and months and months because we were waiting on that final journal right. entry. Um, I think we don't do the cost allocation plan until we have a finance director looking at it and giving their opinion on if we should do that process or if we should do it the old way where I take a bill once we get it and split it mm -hmm. right at the upfront part of it. Okay. Especially the fact that we're now seven months into this fiscal year. Right. And then, good. Okay. So the, um, the cost allocation plan, and we can get into, because what I do want to talk about is sort of the method and the costs, but because we could use that if we split it up front or not, you know, if we do a cost allocation plan or same, if we split it, it 
we would still either, we still need a consensus those, on the methods. Same, same formula, even, though, even those just when be, it's done. Even those formulas be. that Woodhill came up with are going to have to be changed because of parks and pathways. Oh, I know that. I know that. So let me let me add a little bit more. So we did the fiscal year and 21, 22. I did the final journal entry for um, March, which, you know, because that's where basically 11 twelfths of the year you're using the estimate. And then that last month you use the final to kind of reconcile it. And I understand that created a problem with the bank reconciliation. So we need to figure that out. Um, but going back to fiscal year end 23, which is the one that we're in, we had a cost allocation plan. I'd updated it with parks and paths and all that stuff. I haven't seen that. No, I know, but because, oh. <laughs> because, it, because it was never adopted. So yeah, but I haven't even seen what cost you included in that even. It's, it's, all, it's all in the same spreadsheet. And then come March, how are you coming up with the actual cost? Exactly. So No, I mean, how are you? Are you pulling every single invoice? That's what we had done. That's what I did Which last week. It seems like but, a lot of work. Right, but let's rewind. Let me say something. This organization does not have an adopted cost allocation plan for this fiscal year, the one we're seven months into. So what happened at budget time was Jackie Corto, I remember, and Barry we were talking about the open space fund. They were, um, they, they raised it and it was when we were adopting the budget at the board table where we had, um, we adopted the budget for this current fiscal year with um, using the cost allocation numbers from last year with a few adjustments that, that were recommended. So it was not based on data, current data. So what we have adopted in the budget is not based on data. And so that's the first problem we have to fix. And we agreed and I, and I keep turning over here, Donna, because I remember Jackie was sitting here, but we agreed that we would um, look at it and bring it back as a budget amendment somehow for this year. So actually my request was to first talk about fiscal year on 23 cost allocation plan, because we have all this in here and it's not been- Okay, you I know, wasn't aware of that. <laughs> no, it was pulled out by the board okay. at budget adoption time. So, so, Right now, there is no cost allocation plan, um, and I and I still would um, just to just recommend just a simple that dumb question. Yeah, uh, is is a cost allocation considered part of the budget? Yes, yes, it is. Okay, I just I just wanted to make sure that was clear. And so you know, and and so what I what I do think what what I thought would be helpful today, a good use of our time, is no matter how we do it. You know, at the at the front, splitting every invoice, or at the end with a cost allocation, I think it would be helpful to talk about the methods and the costs of allocation, and we can go through some of that. Would that be okay? Because that seems to be where there should be adjustments every year to the methods to make sure everybody's comfortable with what we're doing, because we need to have documentation for how we split phase. Right, and, and we've always used our, our best information possible, but now we have things like square footage, number of AP checks, like data points. Um, so- In how to develop the brain of the distribution of the- Well, and I can, those costs. yeah, yeah. So what I'd like to do, if it's okay, can we, can we talk a bit about the method and the cost? Because no matter how we implement it, Rebecca, we need to have agreement on that. Does that work for you? Whatever you guys would like, well, it's not up to me. <laughs> I want to know, I'm going to use the word old, but the, the method, the old method. I heard a little bit about it, but I, I don't totally, I can't repeat it. Let's put it that way. How did you do it? How have we been doing it over time? The old method was there's a percentage charge to each fund. Yeah. Okay. And that, that percentage, I would when I received a bill that should be split, I did it right up front when I paid that bill. I charged each fund. Their and percentage. how do you do that step? Pardon? How do you do that step? Do you hand do it? Or no, is I, at API, I can set it up where a vendor okay. is split by percentages. It's all okay. 
automatically. So it's once I put in that dollar amount of that bill, AP will split it for okay. me based on the percentages I put in. And what we are want to do, I ask her. Me. All right, and that's that's it. It's in the record. This fund is charged with this much, and so on, and so on, and so on. Yes. Anything further that you had to do with that method? No. Once it was split, that was that was the end of it. So, and it was accurate. Yes. And then what would happen is in the general ledger, I'm going to pick on audit for example. It okay. was split between Every all fund. of the participating funds because they all have to be audited. Okay. So that audit, and then it would show up in the expenditures as an audit cost. Right. Okay. The, the way that Woodhill did it is it took labor cost and technology cost, audit cost, and it wraps it into a number and then using various categories, it presents it out. And so what you see in the general ledger is a cost allocation number, but there's there's no way to drill down and look to see what is in that number. If, it doesn't if, it doesn't show as technology or audit it, it or does. labor. It's not in the general ledger. It does not. It shows as a cost allocation number. So and I so so what I what I want to say, no matter how we do it, the front end or cost allocation, we have to have a basis for the splits. We do. What? No, 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 no. We did. We did. Whatever. Uh -huh. We did. And and I will say when when I looked at it, it appears that we're not recouping the costs from the general fund, and there was perhaps too much coming from water and sewer, and 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 we didn't have a legal basis. So no matter what you call it, indirect cost allocation any best practice, um, you know, it's called different things. We must have data underlying how we do the split. It can be simple data. What are you talking about? We're running a business. I have this department. Yep. I have this department and this one. Let me, we split the costs if they're involved. If they're involved is the data. So, right. and, and the other thing do. I wanna say about cost allocation, is I, you know, I think this is maybe the third time. Um, I, I don't know, Will, we had a long meeting. Was it with you, Jim? I can't remember. Or David Rowley and, yeah. and going over the methods, but. It was with David Rowley. And okay. It, and yes, it was a long meeting. Um, so what I wanna say. A meeting of this this group? No, no it was, a it, small was group. it was to review. It was to, okay. to review to understand uh, the methodology. The, the, what Hill approach to cost yeah. opposed? Okay. Yeah, and I want to say too, like, you know, it it was you know something done as part of the budget process. It's a good plan. It's something that we have to review and adopt each year. Last year, the board did not have enough time to understand and refine it, and so threw it out. So right now we're seven months into a fiscal year with no basis for how we split the cost. So that's what we have to fix now. So I want to know what the, well, the thing is, it cost might be a good plan, yeah. but as far as people's understanding of that plan in this building is very small, right. including and yours, because it took forever to get that journal entry. It, it's complicated, and I don't think yeah. it's something that we should just Okay, let's go ahead and try to do it again this year. So I want to share, let's talk about the methodology. Okay, so um, because we need to talk about what costs are shared. And I can't, how do I share my, speaking of shared, I'm having trouble sharing my screen. So this is, I keep using the same, spreadsheet and it's in the budget share file that we all use. It's um sorry, let me get this um up a little more. So there's just kind of without getting into finalizing anything or the numbers, I just 
sorry. That's extremely large. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was me, sorry. Apologies, I um, I'm having trouble getting this off the top here. There. Okay, so we have. Let me see where to start here. So let's just talk about first the method of allocation and the costs and the units of allocation, okay? So when I say method of allocation, let's talk about, um, sorry, let me make this a little bigger. Apologies. That would be visible if you could just get down the, the relevant cells. Yeah, sorry. All right, here we go. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so. Oops, sorry, 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 sorry. Let me turn this off. Here we go. Sorry. Oh, okay. I was just trying to bring it up on my screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, again, there's there's the method of allocation, and then there's what costs we want to allocate. So the costs we want to allocate are costs that are typical, indirect, usually paid for from the general fund that are spread across certain funds, right? And so these generally speak- And departments too, right? Yeah, yeah that's okay. what I'm saying. Yep, activities, okay. yeah. departments, funds. Exactly. Okay. All right, so the allocation units are, and, and look, this was a small start. We can build on this. This is sustainable. It's justifiable, um, and but we can add allocation units or take them away. But these were the ones that we've split before, and we can add more if we want to. But this is a very simple, short list of very few of our indirect costs that should definitely be shared, and we're being shared with the split that we used to use. But these are being shared in a way that is we can easily and annually update the data and show each year that it's justified. So, and Rebecca, and I will say, I was confused on how to do the last 12th cost allocation journal entry, but I do feel very confident about my understanding of the plan and the distribution. That last 12th month though was confusing to me. So I agree on that, but I feel confident about the, the um, plan and I feel like there's been um, a lot of kind of trepidation about the plan and maybe it's because of the way it's distributed um, presented which I appreciate is a you know an Excel spreadsheet it's not not kind of spelled out so the allocation units it's our our finance staff and any consultants right we've always split Sandy and Rebecca's time in some way we used to split the manager's time that hasn't been split the last couple of years. We could add that maybe for, I, I'm not proposing adding anything, no matter what we do at this point, we could add it, Jim, for FY23-24, if we thought that's appropriate. The audit, and I also added the actuary, right? Mm -hmm. We always had audit, but I did audit and actuary. The deputy treasurer's time. Cool. Just to well, just to back up, just a real quick. Uh, yeah. Uh, go ahead and finish, and then I'll I'll cycle back. I just okay. Have a question. Okay. Technology. We have a a department for technology. We have a department for building and grounds within the general fund two sixty five. Right. Is that yes. right? Okay. So building and grounds is a a department. Technology is a department. Deputy treasurer is a person. Audit is an account. Finance consultants, finance manager, and director are positions and accounts. The method of allocation, you say, okay, 
the question here is what's what are what what is very simple attainable consistent updatable data that does the most rudimentary measure of what this person does to support the other funds so there are two kind of the number of employees and the amount of money spent might drive the work of the finance director the finance manager the number of ap checks and the number of employees finance consultants is just the same as the finance director since that's been kind of one in the same audit and actuary services the size of the fund balance or working capital these may or may that not be, might be an issue right there yeah. because there yeah. you have 285 with the ARPA money that has a large sum of money. Exactly. Yet we don't do anything about So what would be a better measure right, that was, than that? That was my question too. So, was, was is that really is how, guys, how closely is that related? Right. The so fund balance. You guys, this cost. is our annual work. Yeah. So what would okay. be a better one? What do you think would be better to measure? to distribute the cost of audit and actuary, if not using size of fund balance, what do you recommend as a data point to use? You do. The audit should be distributed based on the amount of effort that an auditor has to use to audit that fund. Yep. The for example, the road SAD funds, they're always in negative fund balance mm -hmm. because that's the nature of those funds and until they're paid off. So what do you recommend so, we use to kind of measure, like what, what might be a data point to measure the amount of work, you know, the auditor needs to do on a fund? I don't think the, well. You think the number of transactions maybe might be more related to the yeah, what's more related? That you something you could put your, you know, I know exactly what what Jessica is getting at. And you wanna you wanna be able to update this just by saying this was the number of transactions by fund. Yeah, and, yeah, but even and, at that with the road fund, there's some road fund where there's no all the work's done on it. One, so there's not so gonna be so there's like one any, transaction. There's maybe. not gonna be any AP checks cut, not no work done on that, but yet they still should be charged. Okay. So there's like a baseline, so yeah, so a baseline and on it. For so, a, a static and, fund, you know, so we can do that. You in the the road SAD funds, they they spend very little time on those because all they really have to do after year one is make sure that what we're supposed to collect, we collect it. And sure. So I, I have a question. Maybe there's because for some of these, like, is I'm just going to throw this out. So for audit and actuary services, I mean, actuary it only applies to those funds that have staff. Correct. Audit applies to all funds, but perhaps there's some funds that we don't charge any for. Maybe funds that are so small, so unused. Maybe there's a threshold to say, you know, you must have at least, you know, anything that has more than X dollars or 10 transactions in a year gets an audit distribution. I think any fund that should be getting an audit distribution because the auditors are going to have to look at every single fund. Okay, so we don't leave any fund out. So, so just a baseline, some baseline that everybody, every fund gets charged. So would you like to divide it equally across the funds? You mean the cost of the audit? Uh huh. Well, no. Okay. You how, can't do how that should it be? because you so, know you're going to charge the road SAD five six thousand dollars for their audit. So what is the data point that's driving the distribution? I like the percentage factor. It's work. I, well, I, I don't think that there time. is a quantifiable data point, Jessica, when it there, comes to some but, of these but if smaller we're gonna funds. Legally describe, if we're not going to ask the auditors to track their time, do functional timesheets, let us know at the end, which we're not going to do. But I'm saying if we're going to estimate, we need to use a basis. So what do you all think from your experience, Rebecca and Sandy, what drives 
the amount of work the auditor has to put into each fund. They have to ask the auditors. It, it depends on the type of the fund. Okay. And in well, like next year, the auditors are going to spend more time, I assume, on Maryland Way, Dale View Drive. Those because they're newer, Summer first year, and they a lot more activity happening than those compared to Parkland Plaza. That's all. okay. So, so let's talk talk that through. So maybe like what maybe road SAD funds get charged an audit fee just in the first or get, second year. No, I think they all should no. get flat fee. Well, how do we come up with that? Is it two hundred and fifty dollars per year? Is that it, it, this is it a different used to question? Two hundred and twenty, um, and then we went to two twenty five just because the audit fee went up some. Um, well, I'm just talking. That's but, uh, that's a baseline fee, right? For, or, it, it or, was, or cost it was allocation. a small no. allocation to them based on the overall time it would take an auditor. To accomplish the total audit, uh -huh. you know, the general fund is going to take a lot more time. Water and sewer take a lot more time. Right. The DDA is a bigger fund, but it doesn't take a lot of time because right. there's there's so little because for them to audit. And and what is and the little? What is what is that measurement? When you say there's so little for them to audit, is it number of transactions? Is it let's get a data point to what you two are talking about? Well, I don't if think I can, there is a data point. If I can make a suggestion me. here, Please, we, we do have, because I, I just think of this in terms of, we don't have, there's no one data point we can use. We can use multiple no, data points. No, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I think if, if you assume that everybody's going to have a base cost, every fund will have a base cost. Okay, so whether, we want whether, everybody whether it's, to pay something. Whether it's, you know, thousands of transactions, whether it's none, every fund should have a, a base cost. Right. And then couldn't you on top of that, a multi-layer on top of that, then add based on the, and, and tell me if the number of transactions is really irrelevant, but I'm just trying to spitball here. Isn't, can't you have a, a base amount for, so every fund gets a certain amount charge. And then if you have a 50,000 transactions, what have you. Well, and I'll show you that, that later because yeah. then we grade it. But what we need are, what exactly what you're talking about, Jen, is, we can have one, two, three drivers, mm -hmm. data points, and then we can allocate and say this data point drives 60% of it, this 30%, this 10% of it. You know, right. everything is possible right. with math, but we need a data point. I think we're making a mountain out of a molehill. We have good mm -hmm. records. The percentage factor works well, has worked well. This is complicated. Time consuming. Look what we're doing well, no, right now. No, I think, no I think if it's we not. Do this, I think it's if we not. do this right from the beginning, though, Donna. Which we, if we can determine what are the, the relevant points, you set you set the formulas once, and, and then you just change the data from your. That's exactly what we started two years ago. Right, yeah. right. I think it's a fairly simple thing, it but is. you have to come up with first. We have how to is, have these conversations, you know, and it's you know it's no different than the you know the. The roads committee trying to figure out how you relate a special assessment to the value. You've got so, to come up with something to, to so, that, it's re, that it's somehow related. And uh, I've got an idea. I got an idea because Jim, we 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 were using size of fund balance. Okay, which I will argue that point. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. The independent of the audit. Well, this, no, this no, is no, where no. we got stuck when yeah. when the board was discussing this. Right. Before. So here's yeah. a couple ideas. That's just one variable. We can add another variable to how we the only thing I can, audit. Okay, the only data point I can come up with Thank for special you. assessments would be the value of the special assessment. There you go, good. So for the special assessment funds, we can consider the value of the special assessment. That's a good one, Sandy. I, don't, I still don't think that's fair either. Yeah, but, I, I don't know. You guys, it doesn't have to be one data point. Rebecca, what if you think about, you know, what Sandy's saying? And along you're going to get closer to a set amount, especially for the road assessments. A set amount is the most fair way to go about it because the same amount of work is put into every road. So you're saying SAD, every road SAD, no matter the cost. That, that's that's my opinion as well. Yeah. That it's okay. it should just be a flat amount for road because, assessments right. because it really that's fine. 
you know, it doesn't take any more time or an insignificant amount of time difference for a three parcel $100,000 road assessment versus a 20 parcel $300,000 road assessment because all they're really looking at is the value of that road assessment and does that pass did we pass the 95% rule meaning did we spend the money that we collected mm -hmm. on that special assessment district and did we assess it? Right. That's what they're looking at. Mm -hmm. And it, it really doesn't matter if it's three parcels, 30 parcels. Right. That makes sense. Or the township wide parcel. It's because it's, it's just a very definitive amount of information that they have to look at. Right. So let me see if I've got this because I think we're making some improvements here. So we know actuary just applies to any funds with people. For audit, the audit costs, we assume everybody's going to pay something. With and the we, exception of the EDC. I hate to throw that out there. Well, no, hold on. Hold on. I think that's a good point. Special assessment funds for the road assessments will pay the exact same amount. The EDC will pay nothing. Right. I agree. They earn $5 in interest a year. They, they don't yeah, get on. I know. And, <laughs> and that's never been in there. Yes. we. That's yes. But then if we know... Can't. We can't, we actually, that's a longer answer. We've talked we about that. We've lot. talked about it. Um, so then within those parameters, then for the rest of the funds, how do you distribute the work of the cost, the work of the audit? If not by, we could do size of fund balance. We could also, I thought what might address the open space concern is we could do size of fund balance, but the average of the past two years. See, I, I'm sorry, the size of the fund balance has nothing to do with the audit costs. That's fine. So then would it be number of employees, amount of money spent, number of AP checks, another thing, number of cash receipts? What, would, what do you think drives it? Rebecca, Sandy? It, it all depends by year, just like the LPC there's a lot more questions and stuff because of the complicated purchase and selling that you guys had last year. Right. So every year is going to be different. Right. So but to me, it's not fair to have the audit cost go bing, -a bing, -a bing, -a bing, -a bing. You know, I agree. That's why we want to <coughs> allocate it ahead of time. But do you think there's but, any relationship between the audit cost and the number of transactions or AP no, checks because or? LPC is very low transactions. Yeah, no. like last year, we spent a lot of time. Well, no, but they're already being paid. Everybody's going to pay that base, whether it be no. some 30%. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah Everybody I mean, will pay a base amount. It's not a base amount. Everybody pays something. Right. Well, I don't know how you would have a base amount that differed from one fund to the other. Um, I'll show you. But, uh, but then add on top of that another component for... What about number of contracts, number of transactions, number of POs? I mean, see, that's the thing too. Is we're getting complicated. Well, that's that's <laughs> right. Okay, that's so right. who's going to count this stuff up every year? Well, and you even as a report the year, from the SRH, March, I, I'm, to get the actual cost, you had to uphold all these invoices. How did you? How did you come up with the actual cost spent on everything that was part of that cost? I looked at the actual invoices. But take an incredibly amount. And Rebecca, even if we don't do this at the end and we do it up front on every single invoice, we still need a methodology. Yes, I, I agree okay. with that. So let's let's focus on the audit. Well, isn't it, and, and actually that is an important question. If you do it at the end, then the the different budgets, the, the different cost areas, the fire department, the utilities, all those folks are not going to know until the end of the fiscal year what their cost allocation is. And, but but no, but but Will, we're we're eleventh, twelfth. We were like this close. We were very, very close last year. So so what we do, look, this is how we do it. I, I still want to get through the method because this is important. Because if we do it up front, we still need a method. But at the end, Will, what we have done for one year 
and and I you know would do under this again is we adopt the estimate, okay? So based on the method and the cost of the units, then we figure out the cost to be allocated based on the budgeted amount. Mm -hmm. And then we take one twelfth. And it's what's helpful to funds about that is they're getting the cost taken out month to month. So they're not like hit at the end. And I see the chief nodding. They're not hit at the end with, oh yeah. And now we, the accounting department got caught up and we're doing this, this, and this. Yeah, no, no, no one wants that surprise. No surprise. At the end of the <laughs> yeah, so, so it's, it's one twelfth of the estimate. And then it's just that 12th month will, where then it just has to be reconciled. And that that clearly we need way, help though, with. If you did it all along the way, they would be getting hit at once with with a cost. They'd it's, be getting hit along through the year. I, right now, I agree. We did not. The the board has to adopt this cost allocation plan with the budget you said. Because we, which it was not for fiscal year in twenty three. Correct. Now and so we've been, all these departments would get hit with the cost allocation from April to December. Yeah, so so we're in because the board throughout the cost allocation plan didn't adopt a different plan, front end or back end, we are here figuring out a methodology seven months into a fiscal year. And, and that's okay. But I think if we figure out the methodology, then for this year, Rebecca, we figure out how to implement it and make it happen. We just need something we can justify. But well, we're you're, we're talking about two different things here. And I, I think we need to. I want to focus on the method. I think we need to, right, we need to focus. I Personally, I think dividing it at, at the time of the invoice is the right way to do it. But you're going to use the same formula. We need whether a basis. You do it, whether you yeah. do it at the beginning or the end, it doesn't matter. If you have a formula, like I, I used to give you those spreadsheets for all the IT stuff, and bones. And, right. This you know, if you've got that idea. in hand, it's very simple to distribute invoices, yeah. but you have to have the spreadsheet, exactly. so to speak. And, and that's why I think we're, it's, I think we can all kind of agree it's a better way to do it up front, but you still have to have the same. A basis. A, mm -hmm. uh, a split okay. as you go. Yeah. And that's, that's, that what we're talking, that's what we're talking about, not when you we need to it. be able to justify why we split it. A certain that's time. what we're talking about. And, and, you know, just so everybody is clear, we always did do that. We didn't create fancy spreadsheets, except in some cases when they were necessary. But we always did look at like how much of my time was spent working on water and sewer activities, how much of my time was spent working on fire activities, how many, you know, how much accounts payable was coming from fire, how much was coming from water, from sewer. We always looked at that when we decided the percent of someone's time that was being allocated yeah. out to the other funds. So we did do that. We just didn't do it in this complicated way. Yeah, data driven. So exactly, data driven. This so, is data driven. Okay. So I want to so say is the other method. I wasn't. think I think yeah. we've gotten as far as we can on audit and actuary. Let me take a look at it. Let me just state, make sure I have okay. What, what, we, what we know so far, actuary just for funds with people. We're gonna assume everybody pays something for the audit, some sort of base gym. Special assessment funds for road assessments will pay the same as each other. EDC will pay nothing. Let me take a look at it and then we'll figure out some data points. But, Let me, but can we keep going on the next my one? My recommendation though is you're hiring a finance director. I would have them look at it and, and come up with their recommendation and their cost splits because right now you even brought in a cpa to help with the audit mm -hmm. that was completely confused by this mm -hmm. yeah and so other I and others are not i mean when i talked with brian Camiller, i mean this you guys well they're not they're not confused by a cost allocation plan they know what it is right. but our mythology and how we came up with it the methodology, I think, is clear. I think that the way we implemented it's not it has not been clear. Everybody is unclear about it. I know. So, so let's keep talking. So let's keep talking about it. So let's keep talking about it. You're going to get a dead horse, though, until you get a finance director in here to look at it. That, that's okay, Rebecca. 
we can we can move forward because we're we're going for fine instructor and we would but i'm saying right now we are operating without any split for this current fiscal year so let's just talk about the logic of it and we don't have to finalize anything okay so so depth oh sorry the, sure. the only way in my mind and tell me to shut up if you want to to look at this is to go type by type the audit is a specific type that's what this the, does can, can we hear the from actuary Interruption. The actuarial cost to me is the easiest one out there. Right. It's strictly the number of people in what department or fund that they work exactly. in. So if the fire department has 11 people that the actuary is looking at, they and there's 22 people total, the fire department pays 50% of the cost. Agreed. That one's easy. There's no reason why that can't be set up that way mm -hmm. when you just look at the total number of people and how many people each department yep. in, in, in fund has, mm -hmm. and you take that percentage. Yep. Done. Agreed. The, as far as building cost, you have the insurance, the electric bill, the gas bill, the water bill, those that you have to drive by square foot. And that's what we do. So that's building and grounds, percent of township hall space. I'm gonna pass this around. It's not for the- Say, hold, hold on, let's, uh, Andy has a comment back here. Oh, sorry. Just, just a brief comment uh, related to actuary. Um, I don't know the specifically number of people is the right data point uh, because we no longer have any retiree health care liability, so we don't do a retiree health care. That's zero. We would apply to that. And I've got six people to find them for building grounds. That's not entirely accurate because you have a retired fire chief. One. Yeah. So, so, so I'd say there are still there is still point, that. That data point might be number of people covered by the plan, not number of people in the park. Absolutely. Well, that, but yeah, yeah, that is what we're talking. Yeah. But yes, just, just clarify. Yeah, I made that note. Well, and, after, and that would take effect whenever we made that transition, right? Correct. Right. So Correct. yeah. Okay. Yeah, really and, and in fact, if the board does what the board said they were going to do and moves forward with changing the OPEB for this building, it will reduce the amount that the actuary has to do. But it's still, I mean, depending on how you handle current retirees. Understood. Don't we have a deadline for doing that? Deadline for Your deadline's March 31st. Yeah. yeah. For the state, or right, exactly. we're going to get hammered. So, so it's, yet not, again. it's not a question of, of whether we will do it. It's yeah. you know, we have to do it. So it may become not a non-issue in the going into the future. Correct, but the for year. but for the actuary that we paid in fiscal year 22-23, it has to be by the number of people that was covered within that report right. and the department or the fund that's that they are assigned. That's an easily identified data. Exactly. Right. Okay. Good. Okay. Building cost you do by square foot. Phone cost you do by line. By the number of lines. I mean, this is what we always did do. Yeah, that's what's in here. So I don't see any reason to change it because we've always done it. We, you know, um, this is just so, because someone says you ought to do it this way doesn't apply to us efficiently. So let, let me just share the data sources, okay? So, and, and so buildings and grounds, yes, percent of township hall space. Yeah. That's a really easy one. Right, That's and I did apply in here some new space um, for parks and paths, very minimal. <laughs> That's about the truth. That's <laughs> you can find. But, but it is, a you know, so, so to, you know, and, and this is all on a spreadsheet. You don't have to look at that, but that's my, my math. Technology, we've used number of computers, but we could also, which is basically one and the same as number of workstations um, to kind of divide those costs. I mean, we could look at that, that Jim, that just seemed to be the simplest. So the data sources for each of these, and oh, and then 
deputy treasurer was simply cash receipts as a rudimentary measure for 40% of it, knowing that 60% is probably covered by the 1% admin fee. So it's kind of like 40% of the time cash receipts. So we can talk about, but, but if you needed a kind of rudimentary data point. Well, that's, that's arbitrary made up. I mean, there's no facts in, in that number that somebody made that up. The number of cash receipts is not no, made up. No, the how you're how you're determining the 60-40 thing that's it's, that's made up. It's it's an assumption, and we can change it. It's made up. So, yes. sure, it's an so so. What it, what do you think is a a better assumption? Um, if not 40-60, I mean, it's I know it's kind of tough to say, but if you're saying like, you know, the Tax collection is covered by the 1%, you know, 40%. We could also just do, you know, 100% of deputy treasurer driven by cash receipts, but that didn't seem quite right because you have so many other duties. I do. Well, so anyways, we don't have to decide this right now, but Sandy, do look at this one. Um, so, But I want to talk about the data source. And Donna, this gets to your point is that this data is something we look at and can update anytime. So when we look at say the number of employees, if we're gonna, for whatever we're looking at number of employees, we just look at the, you know, payroll excluding committee members as of 331.22. If we're looking at the number of AP checks, we're looking at the accounts payable report, right? So it's something we can pull every year. And most of these I was pulling for calendar year end, 2021, 12, 31, 21. I, I thought that might be the right point in time because it's between, you know, um, mm -hmm. like taxes have been yeah. collected. What do you guys think is the right point in the year to point to this data? Does that make sense, Jim, to kind of do it by 1231, knowing we'll need it for budget planning? Right, because we're, you know, we're already in the budget planning uh, time right now. So it'd be nice to have that available and is at there, least to know for, for budgeting. Purposes. Yeah, and is there anything about workflow by 1231-21? Is any particular fund going to be kind of at a particular low point or high point? For taxes. Oh, it doesn't matter which 12 months you're looking at, Jessica, because you're including 12 months. So you're going to get the highs, the lows, the heavy times. The, so so well, no, a, I think the no, point, no, the so point was the when, point you, when you do it to, so that you can do it while you're preparing the budget. And it's right, also what I'm saying is it doesn't matter if you're looking at 1231 so if you're looking at a calendar year or a fiscal year, you still have all 12 but, months. But, but Sandy, not for the point in time data, such as a size of a fund balance. If we were going to say, let's look at size of fund balance, is 1231 the right time? I'm going to argue you should never look at size of fund balance. For anything. For okay. anything. Well, that's, okay, well, that's fine. That's, that's a different topic. But okay. that's why I'm well, saying I'm looking to at each. When do you take a snapshot yeah. or, that you're going to use for these data? Points. Or so number, what, okay, number of employees. And that's what I'm saying. If you're looking at those types of data points, it does not matter. You've got 12 months. The only place it comes into okay. matter is if the fire department hires three new people on January 1. Of course. Thank you. Then <laughs> <laughs> I only picked that because you did that. Already. <laughs> right. and, that's, and that's where you think, yeah, the estimate versus actual. I understand those changes. So I understand. But it, it, it's not like we're, we're growing exponentially in, in some areas and not in others. Right now, for the most part, we are the status quo. So right. it doesn't matter if you pick right. December 31st or March 31st, you've got all 12 months in there. The count is not going to matter. Right. I think okay. you do December 31st 
calendar year it's and, fine. and it lines up with your budget. Time. That's what I, yeah, no, that's, that's why I it's fine. Like, that's so, what I'm saying. It, it doesn't that's matter. Why, so that's why I recommended it. That's why we've been doing it this way. I just wanted to make sure there's consensus. Um, okay, so then there's the method of allocation and then there's the, and the data. So again, you know, we can always, I just pick data points that are easy to pull. Anybody can pull them, they're verifiable. And then you look at the costs and units of allocation. So let's just look at allocated department and level of column A and B, okay? And, and this is again, the planning process we should be doing each year. Whether we do it up front or at the end, it's just the, the methodology. So the finance staff, and this is actually, if we could please, let's start at the bottom because this one's the easiest. I think what we're talking about is not methodology so much as formula. Exactly. Same thing. Okay. So technology um, is a department. Now this level of, that's how much is driven by the data point, right? Because some of these have more than one data point driving them. Technology just has number of computers. So 100% of the technology costs, all of which we bill to 228, cost allocation, which is why it appears that way in the GL, Sandy, 100% of it is driven by that. So when you look at and these are just numbers from you know what was ad adopted. When you look at the dollars to be allocated and you split it across the funds by number of computers. So you look down, you know, so what I've done is taken the number of computers, right? You got 36 in the general fund, four in the fire fund, zero in parks and paths at the time you know, three in the sewer fund, four in the water fund. I just split those in half. And when you do that, then proportionately, that's how the costs are split, right? 113. Sometimes that's not fair because like this year, okay, Ann bought computers and printers and, and a bunch of things to get her up and going. And now all departments are sharing that cost when it should only be charged to parks and that. So that's great. So then technology, maybe it should be. This is why it's easier when you get that bill and you see that bill for me to say, okay, this all goes to Parks and Pat. And, and that's fine, but let's just write down what you're saying here because I think it's, it's maybe number of computers for like ongoing operating and then each department for new equipment or new yeah, it wouldn't be capital because it's too low. For right. But yeah. Nonetheless, New it's, equipment. it's so treated as capital for purposes for. of charging it to the. Right. The, and the, so the, it, it, it's actually, since it's not capital, it's just office supplies. Expensive. No, I understand that. So, but, but, but we can have a different line. Charge. Yeah. It really should be charged directly to the person purchasing it at the kind of point of paying the bill. Yeah. And so, so it's, it's a service. So, you guys so divide it up by the number of computers as uh -huh. opposed to the actual hardware. Costs. So, so what we want to look at then is our allocation unit. So right now our allocation unit is the full 228 department. And it sounds like from this conversation, what we want to talk about is making it more specific, specific accounts of that department. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, doesn't technology also include software such as BSNA? Yeah, it does. So it's it's kind of I think it's, it's not in your dollar amount. But that's why I can it's understand your method method of allocation. It's not a I don't think so. BSNA isn't per user, right? No, no, no. Nope. It's per software, and then yeah. you have to look at each individual application to see it's who price uses based it. on range of users. This many users, this many users. <laughs> this is not helpful. Yeah, no, I. Well, that's, I, I think that that's an easy one. Yeah, right? so so this it's one, I'll just way. I'll just whittle down the allocation. Because unit for, to something for that's example, operating. Jessica, yeah, you understand what I'm when you're, when you're okay. looking at BSNA software, I know. utility billing is only used by two funds. So all of that cost should be. 
I add the dollars and see your cost allocation. Just out of curiosity, is this is this the only breakdown that we have right now? Is that just those? What is it, six or seven? Well, there's still like Comcast and stuff that's broke out by, by the spreadsheets. We no, I'm use. saying that the cast cost allocation that was proposed is that it right there? Yes, that's just all. Just those have. whatever yeah. nine nine items. Right. So it's, it's okay. I, I'm just trying to get to sort of wrap up the conversation. Is I have no problem if we sort of modify and refine that thing for the current fiscal year. But I we don't just, think I think it's something where all of us need to be included on. No, it. I agree. We should all we should all agree on what we're going to use the current fiscal year. And then I completely agree that the finance director or whatever we end up doing needs to be involved for the following for the following fiscal sure. year. But we need to obviously we need to do something for the current fiscal but, year. And that's why I'm thinking. Absolutely, but but let's just finish the methodology, Jim, because once we do that, we're gonna we're gonna be able to do what you're saying. Okay. Because okay, so then buildings and grounds we're using percent of township hall. Yep, I, square, square footage. I'm okay. fine with that. All right. So, yeah. sorry, go ahead. It's, might, not, per might, it's not perfect, but it's- No, but might I suggest, I think that you're, you're trying to come up with, or trying to use a formula for all of these different types of cost sharing that doesn't fit into the formula. Might I suggest a hybrid so that things that are purchased for a particular purpose, a particular department, a particular fund, it goes direct to that fund irregardless. Yes. So for example, Anna bought a whole bunch of computers, printers. I don't know what Anna bought. Yeah. I'm just saying whatever. That at the point of purchase Agreed. should be coded to her fund, her department. I agree. All of it. All of it. 100%. Okay, absolutely. Then, you know, if, if you want to look at people's time, Rebecca's time, my time, whatever, and put that into your formula and the building cost yeah that makes sense that's what's in there however when you're talking buildings and grounds in particular because she changed where howard's time is being cost howard spends an exorbitant amount of time on parks and pathways but that's not being charged to parks and pathways so, so i think we should be looking at people's time mm -hmm. using your me your method mm -hmm. But not, but costing them out at the point of payroll based on that method, that percentage, rather than lumping it into this cost allocation. The cost allocation works well for building costs. It works well for your external IT people based on number of computers. It does not work well for these other things that are much more, that has that has different components to it that are exceptions okay. to what you're trying and, to do. And Sandy, I think this works. I think here's what I asked for, which I never got from Howard and Steve, is this. Howard, what is your X amount of time on parks and paths versus building and grounds. If we have that, then that's what we do. But it changes every week. But we don't. But you can get. Gonna but do if you get a twelve-month average, yeah. you have a twelve-month. Exactly. Month I understand that that's switch, it. but it's an. Uh, what's the word I want? It's a, a moving target. But it's a best it's, estimate. It's, it's all right, but you know, I think we need to do a hybrid method, like I said, and that some things are done at point of purchase and some things right. and are done yeah. in the cost that's allocation. That that is the distributing well. it at the end yeah. is going to make it very difficult for things like Anna's computer. But if, those, you, if you purchase those things at the, or you distribute them right at the point of the purchase, of purchase. But that's the invoice, what's happening now. Is that what's happening now? 
in some cases, I think some things yeah. are charged in that technology that shouldn't be charged in that. I technology. agree. I think in technology in particular, we need to break out the accounts a little, be a little more clear about what goes in which account, and then just pull those out. That makes sense. Because really, I agree. really, a lot of the bigger picture problem here is that it's not just the cost allocation that Woodhill changed. They changed the entire general ledger and how it, they created, it, I don't know how many extra departments we have now. There's got to be at least 10 more no. departments. The we board never created had those. Full. We created those. I don't care who created them, Jessica. I'm saying I know. the problem is, and please hear me, mm -hmm. the problem is that was changed without any implementation, education, any user contribution. It was just changed by somebody who was not the end user of the product. And it is not being as accurate as it should be. And that's what's causing the, a lot of this I think that's what we're trying to fix. Right, we're trying right. to, to, so to, to, to make sure that this the, gets corrected. The starting point and understood. isn't just cost allocation, but the starting point is now looking at the general ledger as it sits and making sure that we're getting things properly in their place. Mm -hmm. That has to be first. And then you can look at yeah, what is in those places and how should those costs be allocated to other users of those goods or services. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay. And if I could ask Sandy, if you all would look at those allocated departments, especially to technology and buildings and grounds, and just look at, you know, here are the accounts that should be shared, here are the accounts that shouldn't be shared, you know, if, if it breaks out like that. Well, we need to start with the general ledger first, and then we can, as we're doing that, then we we would have a better understanding. I know. I'm just talking about what should be. I'm asking how we should focus be. on those two departments in particular so we can get them sorted out. But you're putting the cart before the horse. When no. you listen to Sandy, she knows what she's talking about. Respect, Let's Anna. do it that way. Right. Please. But it's not, Anna, it's not your time to speak. And have, a, have a seat. She's not have a seat. Have a seat. The process. I, I understand, but I, it does sound like, um, well, Jim, let's look at the IT together if we could, the yep, accounts no. in there. I But I understand. I, I understand how to allocate the IT, but it's uh, and but it come, you know, I can't, I can't speak for things like the audit costs uh, yeah. and all these other things. And I, I agree, it has to be some kind of a, of a, of a hybrid. But, but it, it is, and this doesn't exclude that. Okay. And it, and it can be better, Sandy, but I'm saying I agree with you and, and, and this doesn't exclude that. But I just, I also just want to ask people to please, you know, this has been, you know, something that we implemented in February of 2021. And I, you know, so, you know, when you look at this spreadsheet, like, let's talk about it. If you have questions, let's keep having these meetings. But I think so much of it is, uh, you know, just a, a lack of, you know, if there's a better documented allocation way of doing it, you know, bring it, but it's not, yeah, I think just saying like, oh, this is different, this is hard, this is confusing, yeah. this is wrong. We can always make corrections. We can always make things better. And I think we would have avoided that if we had more involvement in the beginning. Yeah. It's just, I yeah, we, and I it was a quick, quick, so I, I think, think when we go forward that, with, that, that with we, this we need one, the process to be right. very inclusive of everybody. Yeah, and, and uh, I will and also say forward. the beginning was January, February, 2021, right? I mean, Sandy was out, we were doing the budget process, a lot was going on, but it's been almost two years. So, you know, I'm just asking for, you know, okay. more. Well, I think, I, I think that this has been very productive. I think we've identified a lot of the problems mm -hmm. and I think this is gonna be a work in progress. Uh, I would like to have more meetings on this, and especially now we sort of identified some of the problems. And if you guys can, kind of brainstorm a little bit and come up with some ideas. I think we, we get together and maybe we can come up with a form, at least a method of doing this thing that's going to be more 
the method related, is what's important. More related to the yeah, the implementation is, as far as I'm concerned, easy. I think Secondary. I would like to see these things distributed right at the point of uh, the charge. And, so, uh, so would we. And uh, I think it's easier because then you don't have to go back and try and figure out, well, well what, how was it? How is it distributed? Plus, plus it's That's way more transparent to do it that yeah. way. You can have, it, it's no different than the fee schedule, Jessica. You can have how you come up with that fee schedule in the background. But you're showing the you're showing the the customers of the services what the fee schedule is. They don't they're not going to sit there and say, well, you know, how did you come up with that number? Yeah. And yes, those are things that should always be looked at in the budgeting process. Right. Okay. Well, and has been. So, so we're going to have to we're going to put this to bed for the moment. But let's focus on that. Yeah. Okay. Our formula. Uh, we have one more item on the agenda, <laughs> but I think we did. I think we made a lot of good progress. Uh, we got, at least we identified the problems. Um, the only other thing we have. Does everybody have a copy of the the proposed uh, schedule for next year? I don't think. Did not you do that? Not no. not. This is this should be a really fast, easy. It was more or less the, the third Thursday with the exception of January, and that's because we're trying to fit that into the timeline. Jim, what would be the proposed time? Oh, 10 o'clock. Okay. Same, same time. I'm sorry, I should have put that in there. That's okay. Um, uh, do I have a motion to adopt the, the, the uh, proposed meeting schedule for 23? So moved. Uh, second? Support. Support. Any uh, discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that carries. Meeting schedule has been adopted and uh, a proposal to adjourn. Do we need a. <laughs> <laughs> or we just all run. <laughs> <laughs> we just run. Quick. <laughs> no, I move to adjourn. Support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Very good. Thank yeah. you, everybody. Thank you, Jen. Okay. Thank you, Jessica. You're welcome. I don't need any more budget meetings today. <laughs> this is two in a row. <laughs> but they're important.